Good morning. Welcome to worship on a beautiful day. We're thankful for the gift of rain for our yards and our fields and crops. Um, there um, don't really have many announcements, but uh, just to let you know that uh, this Thursday after LLS confirmation is over at 9, Jesse and I will be leaving and we will be gone. Um, we'll be back the following Tuesday night or, uh, or Wednesday morning. So uh, there is someone to cover and there will be someone on call in case there's an emergency. And then you will see when you get the, new, the, the September newsletter that there will be a service of confirmation uh, at 10 o'clock on the 13th of September for the service that we should have had in May, but the confirmation will be on the, at 10. You're, you're welcome to come, but we are kind of leaving it the sanctuary for as many of the family uh, of the confirmands as we can. And then also a reminder that uh, uh, Baylor's brought bread again. There's bread in the narthex. Make sure you uh, help yourself. Are there any other announcements? Um, also, um, please continue to pray for those who are listed in the bulletin. And continue to pray for Bishop John Radoski, who had surgery, back surgery, uh, a couple of weeks ago to repair a vertebrae that he injured when he fell. And uh, our families, teachers, students, as we began the new school year, and then Keith Schmidt has asked for prayer for the friend, uh, family of a friend of his, Shane Clark, who died uh, Saturday night of a heart attack. So if you remember the Clark family and Keith Schmidt and his family as well. So as the bell is rung, let us pause to give our attention to the leading of the Holy Spirit as we worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin to God the Father, that we may receive his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Of your holy name. Amen. In his mercy, Almighty God has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In
For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I hate the company of evil lures and will not sit with the wicked. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. But as for me, I walk in my integrity, redeem me and be gracious to me. The second lesson for this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is written in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what would it profit them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? For what will they, or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, as I was listening, as I was listening to Wes reading the second lesson from Romans 12, and uh, having read it numerous times and stand, sitting here in this congregation um, among you, listening to this, listening to this word, I have to say, you know, I think this this could be a job description for every Christian. Now, of course, there's lots of scripture that could qualify 
as, as that, like 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, etc., etc. Or we could, we could just simply say, uh, we could simply sign at the bottom line where it says, do unto others as you would have them do to you. For love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Sign in the book. Uh, yeah, I will do that. Uh, it's certainly, and I know that I'm quote, preaching to the choir, as it were, but certainly the things that we could use these days in the world in which we live and the chaos that's going on, the church needs to take with utter seriousness what it means to be uh, the church. This uh, last, last week's sermon from the gospel text, just preceding the one that I just read this morning, uh, is, is the confession of Peter at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? What about you, my disciples? And he said, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you. Simon, son of Jonah, the flesh and blood that could not reveal this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven. And so, I, I pointed out that one of, the, one of the key aspects of this text that's often overlooked is Jesus' statement that you didn't get this on your own. You didn't, you didn't come to this conclusion by yourself, and you certainly didn't get it from what you're hearing the people say about me because they don't have it right either. The only way this came to you is by revelation of God, the Father. And I tell you, he said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What rock? On Peter, whose name means rock, or on a different rock? Well, we Lutherans have always believed that it is on Peter's confession itself that Jesus builds the church, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And then Jesus warned them not to tell anyone. You're right, Peter. You're right. God revealed, God the Father revealed you, but don't tell anyone. A lot of people, we've often struggled, I struggled with that for years, and it wondered why, does, why would Jesus not want them? Want them to tell. When, when Jesus healed people, he was often, often say, don't tell anyone, and what, how are they not going to tell them? They go home and they just spread the word, how could you not tell them? And as, as I said last week, I believe the reason that Jesus didn't want to tell them, them to tell anyone is they didn't fully understand what, the, what the, that affirmation meant. They didn't have it right. And we see that today, exactly. So immediately after that, Jesus said, Matthew said, Jesus began to tell them, that he was going to have to go to Jerusalem to be handed over to the priests and scribes and to be, to be uh, tortured and to be crucified. And on the third day, be raised. Apparently Peter didn't hear that. Because Peter, who had just affirmed Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. And he said, Lord, May it never be, may God forbid it. And what, it, what the text literally says is mercy, mercy to you. And it's, it's a, a word that doesn't occur very often in the New Testament, but in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it occurs a lot. And usually in context where the writer or, or the person praying is asking God to be merciful to this person. Peter looks at Jesus and is basically saying, may God have mercy on you. For even thinking such a thing. How can you how can you even think that? And so Jesus takes Peter by law and he rebukes him and he says, Get behind me, Satan. What happened to you are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God? You see, because not only would it take the resurrection and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the disciples. To understand fully what it meant to affirm Jesus as the Christ. But you see, within minutes of this, that it would also 
mean that the disciples, along with Peter, needed to understand what it means to affirm that Jesus is the Messiah. Because most Jews in Jesus' day uh, would have, they, they balked at the notion of a crucified Messiah. A crucified Messiah is a contradiction in terms as we reread in, in the beginning of 1 Corinthians. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. The Messiah is not supposed to be crucified. The Messiah is supposed to come and conquer. Now, Jesus is telling them, and he's telling us, as, as, as St. Paul says to his readers, as James says to his, as St. John says, and, and all of the, the way of discipleship, the way of life is the way of death and the cross. If anyone, anyone wants to be my disciple, if anyone wants to follow after me, then you have to go where I'm going. You have to take up your cross. You have to go to the cross and die. That's why St. Paul, in that, in that powerful, powerful passage in Romans 6, and then also in, in Galatians, it talks about being crucified. Do you not know that our, your old self has been crucified with Christ? We, we, when we are baptized, we are brought by the Holy Spirit out of sin and into Christ. And Paul says, do you not know that as many of you as have been baptized into Christ Jesus, Jesus have been baptized into his death? And just as we died with him, we are raised with him. Just as we died with him, we live with him. This morning, uh, yesterday, LLS classes started, and this morning I had my first confirmation class. The room was just was full. Eleven kids. Please pray for me. Um, confirmation classes aren't what they used to be, guys. I'm telling you. I'm talking to the guys in the balcony. But the, we, we're the, the unit that we're beginning this year with is the sacraments. So I said to Nevea this morning, uh, they were, I held up the marker, she got up, took the marker, went to the whiteboard, and I, I, I didn't even have time to tell her what I wanted her to do, and she began. She drew the boxes. And we, you know, with the arrow, baptized out of sin and into Christ. And they all, they all, uh, they all argue amongst themselves about who gets to draw the boxes. I said, "Well, we'll I'll let you each take a turn. We'll do it. We'll do it every week." If we have. But I, I began began with that, not just because it illustrates what happens to us in baptism, but began with it because I want I want them to have that in their in their heads and in their hearts the rest of the year and the rest of their life. I said, "Maybe if you don't remember anything, just." Remember, this is who you are. Shall we remain, what shall we say then? Shall we remain in sin? Shall we stay in sin and experience more of God's grace? Shall we remain in sin so grace can abound? And Paul says, don't be stupid. I'm paraphrasing. But that's basically, he said, of course not. We have been baptized out of sin and into Christ. How can we, you can't be in both places. We no longer live in the dominion and the kingdom of sin. We have belonged to the kingdom of God. There's a passage in the Gospel of St. John where it says some Greeks came to Philip and they asked that we, we would like to see Jesus. And Jesus says this, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. That makes sense to you, farmers. Unless a grain of wheat is planted into the ground, unless it dies, it remains just a single seed. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The person who loves his life ref refuses to die will wind up losing it. But the person who loses it life or her life, who is willing to die with Christ, to be raised with him. The person who, who hates his life, that is, rejects his or her own life of sin 
but lets it die, in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, that is where my servant will be also. Notice that Jesus leaves, we follow. Jesus dies, we die with him. Jesus is raised, we are raised with him. The cross, the cross is and has always been a horrible instrument of, of execution. It was, it was a forbidden topic among, among refined people in Rome. You didn't talk about the cross. It was, it was too distasteful. And now we, we for 2,000 years, wear and post the symbol of the cross boldly because it means not just death, but it means life itself. I don't know how, you know, in, in Lebanon, Wisconsin, in 2020, uh, not always easy to know how to live this out. We've, we've been sequestered, you know, maybe we're spending more time at home, of course. But wherever we go, whatever we do, we are witnesses that we have died with Christ and we have been raised with Him. And we are called to proclaim that message that Christ, Christ came, that He died for us, that He was raised from the dead, and that when we are baptized into Him, we die, and we live with Him eternally. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and let's join together in affirming the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we pray. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for these who have asked for our prayers and names are in the bulletin, as well as those who have mentioned an announcement. Let's pray for one another, for this church, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for our nation, and for the world. Lord Jesus, our Savior, you call us to follow you, to deny our sinful selves, to take up the cross, and put our trust in you. Open our hearts and minds to your holy word. And by your spirit, help us to understand what it means to affirm you as Messiah, Son of the living God. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit, you give a gift to your sons and daughters so that the gospel might be proclaimed. And that the church may be built up in love. We thank you today for one another. We thank you for those who teach and nurture our children. We pray that you would bless each of them as a new school year begins. Send your spirit afresh and in power to renew your church and your people everywhere in your word. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful and merciful God, in the waters of holy baptism, and by the power of your spirit, you call us and you make us your sons and daughters in Christ. We give you thanks. We pray for the church. We pray for the North American Lutheran Church, our Bishop Dan, our Dean Craig, and for Bishop Radoski. We pray for brothers and sisters at St. Peter's and Pastor Bruno, for the church around the world. And we pray that you would bind us together in the unity of your Holy Spirit and in faithfulness to your Holy Gospel. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord God, giver of life. We pray for our families. We pray especially for those who are struggling, those whose relationships are broken. Strengthen us in genuine love and where we are broken, draw us to turn to you and to one another for forgiveness and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy and compassion on those who are ill, those who are struggling, those who mourn, those who have wandered from the faith, and those who live without a sense of hope. Lord, in your mercy. We ask all these things of you, Heavenly Father, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Heavenly Father. For you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You revealed your holy name to Moses, and in your covenant love called the people to be your own to bear faithful witness to your eternal mercy. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son. In his passion and death, you defeated the power of sin, and in his resurrection, you defeated the power of death. And so we gladly thank you. And with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to sing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, 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 Take 
drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the gift of God for his people. Christ our Lord invites you to his table. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us.
The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith for everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in this holy gift that we are living members of His body and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, our Lord. To Him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as the candles are extinguished. Down in front. 